I just want to briefly talk about are there any storylines sort of entering into the draft that people are not really talking about? Because we sort of know at the top of the draft, Aiden Hutchinson, um, whether he's going to be the number one overall pick. There's a lot of those quarterback storylines near the top. But I'm just wondering whether somebody who's fo- uh, following this all this stuff very closely, whether you're tracking something that maybe everyone else isn't sort of really keyed into. So the Jameson Williams story is fascinating because he was on track to be about like 15 to 10. And then all of a sudden he gets his ACL tear. And a lot of people are dropping him out of the first round. I was like, no, this is going to be a bunch of BS. Like at, once the draft process happens, people will start forgetting about it and he's going to be healthy. ACLs repair anyways. Yeah. And all of a sudden Tyreek Hill gets shopped and we see the value that even when you have to pay a guy $30 million a year, you're still going to get a boatload of picks. Yeah. Even though it still seemed a little bit cheap, but when you add in a $30 million a year contract, it gets a little expensive. Yeah. Then you got like also Debo, on the market and you're seeing a lot of interest from teams there which shows the nfl is interested in a wide receiver one someone who can make a true impact and the jets were in on that tyreek hill fiasco that means they value a receiver who can actually take the top off the defense now we're getting jameson williams in the top 10 all of a sudden pff's like he's going a or else it's a reach or else it's um it's a crazy slip yeah it's very intriguing that's a story to watch because on draft day we'll see how much the nfl truly values an acl tear I, I, one thing that sort of stuck out to me was I think it was either Rappaport or Schefter released some sort of PR tweet uh, about Jamison Williams uh, yesterday, I believe. And it was all about uh, every, all these teams are sort of now hopping onto this train. And it yep. just feels to me like the media narrative and sort of behind the scenes are all sort of taking hold on this guy. And, and it feels like there's a wave here now. Um, it almost reminds me of the Baker train a few years ago when he was that mm. surprise number one overall pick where all of a sudden it was like, Wait, 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 this guy wasn't a first round pick like a few months yeah. ago. And all of a sudden it's like, well, every teams are now talking about Baker as a number one overall pick. So yep. in, in your assessment of Jameson Williams, did you feel like it was a reach or do you feel right now like teams are reaching on him or do you feel like it's an adequate position for him to be taken in, in that sort of top 10 range? So again, wide receiver requires specificity in their role. Again, you're so much farther from the ball. So I think that the term reach really applies to like what team, like how you're going to use him. And I'm going to be honest, my grading scale, I literally talked to my buddy yesterday about this. I'm going to start adding in a new scale for guys who are going to be Z or basically off ball wide receivers. The guys who will not be game pressed like Jameson Williams. I think that as the normal stereotypical X build wide receiver, he's not going to do anything. I have him great as like my eighth wide receiver in terms of that base grading scale. But used in the way since I know the Jets like Elijah Moore on the boundary. That is going to be perfect. Perfect scheme specificity. I don't think that it's an overhype at all if you can use him the way you want to. And Zach Wilson has the cannon. Like he has you have a great brilliant mind with a guy in Robert Robert Solis, great. LaFleur's great. You have everything you need in order to make Jameson Williams have the greatest impact on your roster. So I think that if the scheme is right take him again that guy could be truly game breaking